The Bucks are in a heated series with the Raptors. We got some cheers, cheers, and jeers, and some NFL draft predictions. Stay tuned. Hot Shot Sports is next. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to Hot Shot Sports. I'm Joey Olson. I'm Devin Rogan. I'm Josh Hubach. And I'm Andrew Eisner. Hey, so you know like our introduction there to Hot Shot Sports we got there. Um, I believe that's Chelsea Dagger. You know the best part about that it, here as we uh, reach the end of the, the second round of the NHL playoffs? We don't get to hear that stupid song anymore. <laughs> we'll talk about that in our tears. But first off, let's talk about the NBA playoffs a little bit here. Uh, my hometown, Milwaukee Bucks, they're in a heated series with the Toronto Raptors, which is the 3-6 in the Eastern Conference. The Raptors won the last two of the series and have taken a 3-2 series lead heading into Game 6. We'll have that in Milwaukee on Thursday night. And boys, boy, it's it's a series now. They The Bucks stole Game 1, and then the Raptors ended up taking Game 2 at home. The Bucks dominated Game 3, and now the Raptors have they dominated Game 4 defensively and put on a show for the Jurassic Park on Monday night. <laughs> and so now we had the game six. Uh, what, what are some thoughts here as, as we had later in that series? And this this has been a battle of a series, too. Um, I definitely think that the Raptors have kind of taken almost what the Bucks are doing defensively and have done it themselves. They're playing really aggressive, real gritty, and it's working. It, the Bucks are struggling to score and keep up with the Raptors, and the Raptors are looking like they could take this series. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a big Bucks fan, and it's, it's sad because I don't think the Bucks are going to win after losing Game 5. Uh, uh, I, I just think that defensively we, we're not going to be able to hold. We haven't been able to start, stop DeRozan in the past few games. It's been tough. And once the Raptors have been starting to shoot Ibaka, all those guys, and Norman Powell came out of nowhere, started hitting threes on us, I think it's going to be really tough to come back. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, Powell definitely stepped up big time yesterday. Um, and their defense, they're just shutting us down. I mean, Giannis is definitely still making plays just because his wingspan is ridiculously large that if he gets a good jump, he can get to the basket. Um, but I think we got to stop pushing the ball so much. There has been a lot of shots that I saw Brogdon take yesterday where we're down there where there's still 18 seconds left on the shot clock and we're just launching up shots. I think um, if we want to win the series or at least win on uh, the next game, on game six, we have to be patient with the ball. I think uh, adding Chris Middleton to the offense is going to be a big thing as well. Um, hopefully you can get 30 points out of Giannis, which I think in game two, that, or game four it was, that didn't exactly happen as that was a low scoring affair. All well, the Bucks, their backs have been against the wall, but that's kind of their franchise story in the last few years. Oh, right? yeah. They're about yeah. to move away. Oh, yeah. Um, now mm -hmm. we're going to get a new stadium, and now it comes to a um, game six. They've gone too far to not give up, and as a fan that have just been dying to see them win a series yeah, since 2001, it, I just I'm not ready to give up on it yet. But the series got a little chippy, and let's take a look at um, what happened last night where Valanciunas uh, shoved Greg Monroe. Can we get that on tape here? There we go. Finds a cutting JV, and he's fouled. And JV and Carroll steps in between, pushing and shoving, and the crowd erupts. 77 63. And Dwayne. He's going to do that. He's a great addition to the Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah. Hopefully, you find a way to oh, decide yeah. them. And now that the uh, teams are kind of getting into each other a little bit. This by far has been the best fan. Like that, the yeah. TNT game four where they showed like the Bucks outside the Bradley Center waving the towels. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And yeah. then like Jurassic sure. Park has done that yeah. like the whole time. And now that, now that the Maple Leafs are out of the playoffs there in Toronto, I think people are yeah. going to try to get behind the Raptors a little bit. And yeah. um, by far, that's probably the best fan support both ways in each series. Not to undermine any other fan base, but um, it's pretty awesome to see. Like you walk around campus here at UWL, yeah, um, even Bucks yesterday stuff. or on like Saturday afternoon, Bucks fans everywhere. So we're excited to get for Game Six, and now hopefully we'll say Bucks in seven here in Wisconsin. 
But uh, moving on here, the NBA playoffs have been quite entertaining. Of course, the Warriors, they did a four-game sweep of the Trail Blazers. A little bit surprising. The Cavs, um, even though they kind of trailed in every game, found a way to go ahead and sweep. Otherwise, these, this first round has been pretty entertaining, boys. What, oh, yeah. uh, what has been your favorite series? Uh, so far, I'd have to say that my favorite series has been the Grizzlies and the Spurs. Um, after the first two games, it looked like the Spurs could sweep the Grizzlies. Um, Fisdale, the coach of the Grizzlies, got pretty mad about the officiating and how the Spurs were bullying him around. I feel like Kawhi was really showing that he is one of the top five best players in Absolutely. the NBA. Mm -hmm. And um, Mike Conley is going out there and showing that he can carry the Grizzlies and hopefully he can beat them in the, the rest of this series. I've liked all the series. Um, I've liked. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stay away from like the Jazz, Spurs, and all the series that are close. I'm gonna go with the Cavs, Pacers, and the Warriors, Blazers. The reason I say that is because LeBron James is proving that he is superhuman. He just. <laughs> he just. The regular season is literally it's meaningless true. to him. He's like, you know what? All the triple doubles, all that that Russell Westbrook, any other players got. He's just like, I don't care. Completely took over the series. Just dominate. Best player on the planet by far. It's not even close. And then the Warriors, or the Warriors, Blazers. They're resting coaches. Like, the Warriors literally arresting coaches in the playoffs. That's how much better they are than, than, than like, the Blazers. I mean, those games were – there are a few close games, but, I mean, if watching, honestly, I mean, who would have thought the Blazers would have won any of those games? What about you, Angie? Um, so, my favorite series is obviously the Bucks and the Raptors. Yep. But to uh, go away from that, I would probably say the Celtics and um, the Bulls. Just story. because with Isaiah Thomas and all he's gone through within the last what week or so and his sister passing away yeah. and how he can still stay focused and still be the MVP of the team and one of the best players in the league is pretty awesome to watch. Yeah, I didn't think that the Grizzlies had a fighting chance in um, the uh, expletive. Oh, sure. Mike sure. Conley, but he's been, yeah. yeah and, and then Vince Carter, just the ageless wonder, <laughs> yeah. you know, makes a big shot yeah. in, in that game on, on Saturday night. And then um, the Jazz have kind of been that underdog story, kind of nobody r flying under yeah. the radar. And all of a sudden they're tied 2-2 with the Clippers. Yeah. So yeah. If, you if you stay up late, the NBA hopefully will reward you with some uh, entertainment there in the West Coast. And now, guys, one of my favorite things to do, bold prediction time. <laughs> Who gets it done in the first round? We'll go to uh, we'll go to the East and then we'll go to the West. And who's going to match up in the Western Conference Finals for both conferences? Devin, we'll start with you. Um, I think that I think the Wizards will end up still pulling it off against the Hawks. The Cavs are already in the next round. Um, the Bucks, I I think they can come back and I think they can win it in seven. And I also think that the Celtics will pull through and they will beat the Bulls now that. Uh, Rajon Rondo is out. Um, but in the Eastern Conference Finals overall, I think that the Wizards will beat the Celtics, and I think the Cavs will beat whoever wins between the Raptors and the Bucks. Um, so it'll be those two, and yeah. Uh, yeah, I unfortunately, I'm, I don't want to be that guy, but I mean, Raptors in six, I think that series is kind of over. I do, I think it'll be a close game or in game six, but I think the Raptors do end up, be end up beating the Bucks. Uh, however, I see I see the Celtics beating the Bulls. I mean, Rondo is I just just some recent news that Rondo is actually going to try to play. He's been kind of the X factor for the Bulls, but I still see the Celtics winning. I think they got a bold momentum, and, and then I see uh, Washington uh, beating the Hawks. But I see no one beating the Cleveland Cavaliers because of number twenty three, LeBron James, the best player in the world. <laughs> I'm gonna say that's, on, that's honest. Sure. Yeah, it's true. Whole time. Arguable. Um, um, for me, I th I'm hoping the Bucks pull off. Um, a game seven win um, that would be awesome and then I believe the Celtics are definitely going to end up beating the Bulls um, obviously the Cavs are already in round two uh, Warriors are in round two um, but I have a feeling that most likely it's going to be the um, the Cavaliers making it all the way to the finals so the next two out of three games are the Bulls going to be on TNT do we know that? That's a big factor. That's a big, that's a big thing. That's <laughs> as a big as thing. Out. Um, I'm going to go with the Cavs. Now, I'll, I'll really quickly, let's go to the uh, Western Conference. I do think the Jazz are going to beat the Clippers in, in that round. I, I love Gordon Hayward, Iso Joe, um, hitting that buzzer beater in game one. Um, they would match up with the Warriors. The Warriors probably go there. I know this is a pretty bore, a boring take there. Um, of course, the Rockets are going to probably win today. And then on the other side, I do think the Spurs, just with their experience, are probably going to get it done in those next two or three at home. And then the Eastern one, I'm, you, you said Raptors in six. I think that the Bucks can win game six. Um, I know that a lot of... 
fans of Milwaukee are excited to go to that game mm -hmm. tomorrow. I don't see them losing at home in, in that environment. Um, hopefully, you know, one more stepping stone for Giannis yeah. and the boys. And Game 7 in Toronto, I, I don't know, I'll, gi I'll give that to them. And then that's a rematch of the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see. LeBron James, he, he is super, oh, yeah. kind of that superhuman kind of uh, spark that finals run now that, mm -hmm. that when they were behind 3-1. to one, And if he does end up going and getting a, another ring, that'd be ring number four. And that'd be pretty hard to, um, you know, compare that whole Jordan... Yeah. LeBron thing. Be hard to compare. But let's take a break and we'll get the cheers, tears, and tears when we come back. But first, let's take a look at those adorable, perfect pets. Hi, I'm Ike. I love to play and have fun, as well as cuddle when I get tired. Hi, I'm Diva. I'm a year and a half old Hound Shepherd mix. I'm happy, affectionate, and energetic. Anyone want to play? Hi, I'm Nyla. I'm pretty chill and I love snuggles and head rubs. Mm. I'd like to find a relaxing home and care and family. I'm Rhett. I'm a two-year-old Shepherd Pitbull mix, and I'm looking for an active owner that I can run with. To find out more about adoption for these pets or others, contact the Cooley Region Humane Society at 781-4014. Once again, the number for those perfect pets is 781-4014. And as this being my last time on air here at WMCM, I'm going to give a shout out to James Rao and Tessa Tilat for um, executive producing those Perfect Pets commercials. They did a fantastic job, won an award at the WBA seminar, and uh, we're really proud to uh, be a sponsor there with the Cooley Region Humane Society. But moving on, let's move to some cheers, cheers, and tears. I'm thinking I'm saying that wrong. It's, it's hard to say that. <laughs> yeah, but first of all, I'm let's get to Devin right. here. What do you got for us? Um, for the first cheer, I definitely got to throw it out to Lionel Messi. Um, he scored his 500th career goal for Bar for Barcelona on Sunday in El Clasico against Real Madrid. Um, he definitely, it was definitely an amazing goal. Here it is. Um, he scored in the extra time with 10 seconds left in the match. It was, it was crazy. Last kick in the match. And then they had Ray Hudson, who's a complete legend of a commentator. Just commentating was beautiful. Yeah. He's good. Yeah, it's it's tough, and I, I it's tough because I'm a I, I would say Ronaldo's my favorite player. So Damn, Real Madrid thing, obviously the Manchester United made in Manchester, Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, but he uh, he's kind of the whole reason I started watching soccer when I was a little kid. So that's always kind of tough for me. Yeah, it's cool how after he scored the goal, how he ran to the corner of the field, took off his jersey, yeah. and showed everyone showed who he was. <laughs> that was. That was pretty yeah. cool. That's pretty. Best player in the world, and one of the yeah. best rivalry games in yep. the world. A classic moment that'll go down in history for sure. Well, let's get to the second cheer. And uh, Devin, that's also you. Um, yeah, so the second cheer is that the NFL schedule was released Ooh, this Ooh. Thursday. We've been waiting. <laughs> it's about time. It's exciting to have that schedule finally out. And uh, I know um, three of us are Packer fans. I know that Josh is a Cowboys <laughs> fan. Um, we, we do are, have a rematch, though, down yeah, at AT&T Stadium. Yes, yeah. we do. We, we, have five. That we have that schedule. Can we get that schedule up on the board there for the Packers? At Dallas. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we got uh, Seattle in, in week one, which is a glorified toss-up, opening up a new stadium in Atlanta. You could almost chalk that up as an L. Packers, <laughs> Packers sure. should seriously start two and three throughout the year, but it gets better that um, you get a chance to put, you know, the Browns in Cleveland hopefully is a win. Hopefully Tampa Bay you can beat at home and you can find a way to sneak into the playoffs once again yeah. as a Packers fan. So, But we're just excited for the schedule to come out. Yep. Of course, we get a Monday night game. Everybody knows exactly when the Thursday night games mm -hmm. are, the Monday night games are, and maybe planning a trip or two to an NFL stadium mm -hmm. uh, somewhere mm -hmm. near you. Well, it's now my time to do a cheer. The third one, uh, Eric Thames spent his uh, college days here mm -hmm. in lacrosse playing as a lacrosse logger. Played in the MLB for a while, had to go play in South Korea, kind of figure it out. Um, was an addition to the Brewers this year and has hit 10 home runs so far in the month of April. And there, really there's not much to it, is there? No. Just uh, 
No steroids He's involved. There, just swinging the, yeah, hopefully involved. no steroids involved. I uh, got it. Got uh, some of his home runs up there, and. When he's been an interview, he just kind of says, I just let it all go, mm -hmm. and I kind of just have fun playing the game. And, and hearing that from a guy with, with a hot start, and hopefully he's a great role model to the Brewers, but um, who knows how, how long you can continue that yeah. streak. But um, one of the bright spots for the Brewers, and that home run celebration gets everybody going. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Just cool. He deserves a cheer, at least for now. Yeah. So with that, it's time to go to... The Jeers, Devin. Um, so one of the or the first year is gonna be to Robin Lopez. Um, on Sunday he <laughs> lost, he lost his shoe in the middle of the game, and Jay Crowder kind of picked it up and tossed it. So when Robin Lopez went to go get his other shoe, he started to untie Jay Crowder's shoe. Just completely <laughs> immature move by Robin Lopez, but it doesn't really surprise me. He's a Chicago Bull, and I know that I know Joakim Noah has a lot of immaturity in him when he was in Chicago too. So. Definitely, yes. I totally Deser agree with that. That's a deserves to be yeah. booed. Yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely. Like that's if something were to actually happen from tying his shoe, untying his shoe, how would you honestly feel? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah gonna, he did take your shoe. Just unnecessary. Kind of yeah, it is unnecessary. With <laughs> Robin Lopez, with his like terrifying like look, where he gives that like stare, that like with his two eyes. Yeah. Big stare. <laughs> Robin Lopez is big bro. Yeah, he's a character mm -hmm. though. I like Robin Lopez. Our our next year. It's April, and we've already gotten in two baseball brawls. On Friday, uh, Miguel Sano w got thrown away, um, got a pitch thrown behind him. And then also on Saturday, the Red Sox and the Orioles got into a scuffle. Guys, it's just too dang early for baseball fights. Yeah. Now, the Orioles, they have one of the best records in baseball so far, and the Red Sox probably will compete for a, um, you know, an AL East yeah. title and go deep in the postseason. But I don't think they have kind of deserve to have that. It's, it's just a... Decaf coffee rivalry yeah. so far, yeah. just not, <laughs> and just too early to be get get into it. I'm all yeah. for you know teams getting fired up every once in a while, but let's save that for the dog days of summer. So, yeah. Josh, you have the next yeah. year. Um, I have mine. Uh, it was also from El Clasico. We got two soccer references, and uh, that's probably the first time this year. Is it the first time WMC hey, in Hot I'm all Sports for, it. for yep, two I'm soccer for references? It. All right, there we go. Perfect. Uh, Sergio Ramos, he got sent off um, for a tackle on Leo and Messi. He went, there it is on screen, he went uh, two studs up. Something is a huge uh, no-no in soccer because that could really, they use metal cleats, it's not plastic cleats, so that, that can really do damage, and especially to Lionel Messi, you know, the best player, one of the best players in the world. I'm always going to say Ronaldo, but one of the best players in the world. That is, uh, that's tough, and that's, that's definitely uh, a big red from uh, Sergio Ramos. What exactly is two studs up? I've never actually like heard the two, like two, your two shoes. Cleats. Cleats. Yeah, both okay. your cleats going. Yep. Okay. In, like yeah. I was reading, and he he I've gotten got slid. a suspension as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah he Dang. Did. He's. I'll get a three. Yeah, with metal cleats, it, I've I've gotten slid into or whatever in, in baseball, and that's not mm -hmm. it's not yeah. fun. I it's not comparable to soccer, but it's yeah. that's not fun by any means. And Ramos is one of their better players. Yeah, he's yeah, he's one of the best defenders. Yeah. All right, guys, we got to get through our tiers kind of quickly here, so we'll get through these. The first one is that on the UWL lacrosse campus, now, I, I guess this might be a cheer for me, but for everybody else, <laughs> yeah, you don't get to see kind of the passion on, on the campus here with all the Blackhawks fans and Wild fans here. They're both eliminated from the playoffs. I'm sure maybe, they can, maybe some fans get to focus on their study more, but I'll give, it, I'll give a tier for that because I know a lot of people around us are disappointed that they're both gone. Yeah, so. for sure. Mm -hmm. And you're a Penguins guy. Yeah, correct? I am a Penguins yep. guy. Yep. I hope that they can uh, go out there and get a back-to-back -back, uh, Stanley Cup victory this year. The second one here, we have Dale Earnhardt Jr. announced his retirement today. He'll race throughout the end of the season. Just a NASCAR legend gone. And maybe to, su um, to some people, you know, they say NASCAR is a sport that is kind of declining in ratings or um, kind of attention. With another legend gone like Dale Earnhardt Jr., maybe even more so. I know that... Um, in the back there in the studio, we have um, Andrew Klon, the big NASCAR guy, has a yeah. show. I believe that is an Earnhardt shirt he had on today. Uh -huh. And um, just uh, disappointing to see. I'll, I'll never forget when he won that Daytona 500 when, mm -hmm. I, when I was a kid, kind of honoring his, honoring his dad there yeah. at mm -hmm. Daytona. So um, we wish Dale Earnhardt a uh, mm -hmm. happy retirement here yeah. from WMCM. Yep. So the third one, Josh, we'll go to yeah. you. Uh, this is sad. This is definitely a tear. Giannis uh, Antetokounmpo, Thon Maker getting dunked on by Norman Powell, and Norman Powell is a bum. So that's what makes this worse. It's humiliating for the Bucks, especially when our, our best player and then our, one of our future best players 
um, uh, getting dunked on. So uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to go to a Com Club promo. We'll be back with more. Com Club, I've been um, pretty happy to be a member of that for a few years, and I'm going to miss it here as my time goes here at EWL. But now, guys, the NFL Draft is on Thursday. Now we get to have some fun. We get to make the bold predictions. We get to be the Mel Kuypers here <laughs> of this campus, even though Kyle Popovich is going to make a name for his own one day as an NFL Draft guy. So we're going to give each other a minute, a hard minute. I have my timer up here. Okay. And Devin, we'll, we're going to go to you. We'll have our predictions up on the screen. And here's your minute to talk about the NFL draft. So I'm going to start off with my uh, top five picks. I definitely think that Cleveland is going to take Miles Garrett first overall. Um, I heard a lot about how if he wasn't taken first, then Cleveland would be crazy, and I'd have to definitely agree. Um, number two, I feel like San Francisco needs more defense, so I'm going to go with Solomon Thomas there. Um, Chicago, um, I feel like they need a quarterback. They've never really had a quarterback in their entire franchise history, but I definitely think that Jamal Adams would top off the defense and help them a lot more. Um, for Jacksonville, uh, Leonard Fournette would definitely make that offense extremely lethal. They're already pretty lethal with Allen Robinson and um, Blake Bortles. And then Tennessee, I feel like Tennessee has a pretty good uh, roster right now, and they could definitely trade out of that pick. Um, when it comes to my Green Bay Packers, I definitely think that they could take T.J. Watt from Wisconsin in the first round or Chidobe Awuzi from Colorado or Marlon Humphrey from Alabama. In the second round, I think that they might go to running backs and take Donta Freeman from Texas. All right, your minute is up, so thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And I, I do like the Miles Garrett pick, and I'm, I believe I am next up on the board. So I'm, you want to um, do the minute for me here? Yeah, I got All right. you. Go. All right, so here's my minute to talk about the NFL draft. Let me get my predictions up there on the board there in the back. Thank you very much. And Miles Garrett going first. I think that's a pretty consensus pick. If it's not, if that's not the pick, I mean, come on. Yeah. What yeah. happens there? Uh, second, we got Christian McCaffrey going to the Niners. McCaffrey is is a dangerous run. Although running backs have kind of taken a you know the same thing with Fournette, maybe not so much of a um, consensus on picking a whether well, first. Third, Kyle, this pick is for you in the back there. I, I don't like Mike Glennon getting a shot to be the Bears quarterback. I would love them to see pick Watson and maybe even trade away Glennon. I'm, that pick's for you in the back there, simply for you. And the fourth, you got <laughs> Solomon Thomas going to the Jaguars. They picked up another DN in the fr free agency. So having kind of the both there, that might even give them a, a pick there. And then in the fifth, Malik Hooker, I think he's the best safety in the draft, and the Titans kind of need that pick. I'll go with, so I'll go with Malik Hooker fifth. And then I don't have a prediction for the Packers because who knows? I mean, we, we all know Ted Thompson, right? Oh, yeah. And then uh, real quick, up. the Badgers picking T.J. Watt um, with the 31st pick there. Um, they, that's where they struggled mm -hmm. kind of in that area during, yeah. during their Super Bowl collapse. So having him go to um, Atlanta would be great. All right, next up we have Josh. Yep. All right. So I think that uh, with my yeah, minute is I, now. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Run a little early. But I think it's going to be Miles Garrett, the first pick. He's a freak of nature. He's he's pretty much unpassable. It's it's tough for any uh, any team to pass on him, especially the Browns. Even though they might want to go quarterback, I don't know. Um, I think they if they would go quarterback, I think they go Trubisky because I don't I think he's overrated and it's the Browns, so they'd probably pick it pick him and mess it up. <laughs> um, as for America's team, the Dallas Cowboys, my favorite team. We need defense. Um, obviously, you see the big three right there, Prescott, Elliott, and Bryant, and the best offensive line of football. There is no need to draft any offense in the first round. They That's need defense. Tight end too. Yes, and Jason Witten, Mr. <laughs> Overliable. And um, 
for uh, defensively, I kind of want to see. I know he just failed a drug test, but I, that hasn't stopped the Cowboys in the past. Let's be honest; they're famous for that. <laughs> so I, I'd like to see Jabril Peppers uh, in a Dallas Cowboys uniform. I'd like his explosiveness. He'd be, a, he'd be fun to watch too with a uh, punt return and kick return. Uh, that's also a side thing that would come there. Plus, he would also help playing safety, linebacker, or wherever. Oh, and my minute All right, up. Josh, your minute's up. So Any I'm, closing words? No, nope. that's it. All right. We're going to pass it over. Andrew, we got the last. All righty. Um, like all you guys, Miles Garrett, number one, obviously. Um, he had a great senior season or last season for um, the Texas A&M. Um, pretty fast guy for how large he is. Ran a 4.6440. Um, then moving on to number two, I would say the Bears definitely need help. Um, on the defense, I have them selecting Jamal Charles, or, um, excuse me, Jamal Adams. I know they don't pick number two, but these are just my selections. Um, he's definitely fast. Um, he's got speed. He's got um, he's got height, um, as in vertical. Um, he, I think, would definitely fit that defensive um, backfield. And then where I want to see Leonard Leonard Fournette, I want him to go to the Jets. Um, even though they do have um, Matt Forte. He's been running the ball for a long time. He's getting old. He's getting run down. Um, I think he'd be a great running back for that offense. And since they really don't have a quarterback, you need someone that mm -hmm. can run the ball. And then uh, Jabril Peppers for Dallas Cowboys to replace Barry Church and Mole Claiborne and the Green Bay Packers with Kevin King. We need defense. We need cornerbacks. Absolutely. And he's tall, fast. Yeah. What else can you ask for? All right, your minutes up there. So th uh, once again, the NFL draft is on Thursday night, yeah. and then that will go through Saturday. Yeah. So now let's get a little bit into some buy or sell as we wrap up here on Hot Shot Sports. First, let's talk about the Brewers. Of course, we talked about Eric Thames Thame, before, but now the Brewers, they've kind of hung around 500 their first 20 yeah. games or so, and they've gotten some good pitching. Their bullpen seems to be okay seems to be in good order and are they going to get to 75 wins which I, d I don't see them being 500 of course it's a long season yeah. you can ruin your season about oh, yeah. two weeks in baseball yeah. especially if you like trade yep. on are you going to get that. 70 are you going to get to 75 wins and then Thames 45 home runs that's going to be our over under with Thames quickly guys um, go ahead I think I'm going to buy into both of those I think the Brewers could definitely win 75 I think they could win 80 um, I also think Thames could hit 45 home runs with the run that he's on obviously hitters can get cold out there but Thames is looking hot, and he did really well in Korea, so I believe that he can definitely continue that now. I'm going to buy the Brewers winning 75 games, but literally 75 games, no more than that. They're not going to win much more than that. And I'm going to sell Eric Thames hitting 45 home runs. That's pretty insane. No one even did it last year. Arenado, Trout, Harper, the three best players yeah. in baseball. Those, they didn't do it. Bryant, nobody did that. So that's why I think that's a little extreme for Eric Thames. Yeah, um, like you guys, I'll buy the 75 wins. I think they're off to a uh, hot start. I think they have potential. Um, but with the 45 home runs, I think I'm going to have to sell it off. Um, he, <laughs> he's, he started hot. He's doing great. He has seven home runs against Cincinnati in 10 games. Um, <laughs> I just don't know if the consistency will be able to stand. I'm not going to lie. I'm a pessimistic Brewers fan. As you start, as the season kind of goes on, you might start to see guys get traded, mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. some other guys get a chance to. I'm still going to sell 75 wins for now. But next, let's get to the Cubs here, sticking with the NL Central. I think they have the best MLB record, and I'll say mine. I'm going to buy it because they were the best team last year, without a doubt. They get a bunch of home games as, you know, the Ivy gets green in June and July. I'm going to buy that. Um, I think I think the Cubs will be the favorite in the World Series, but I think I'm going to have to sell. I think that there's other teams, especially in the AL, that are going to be a lot stronger. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to buy that, and the reason is because the NL Central is so bad. So I think the Cubs will get. The, I don't think the Cubs are the best team. I think they I think the Indians are, but uh, I think they're going to have still the best record in baseball. I'm selling it. I can't go with any Illinois <laughs> any, any Illinois team at all. I think their <laughs> offense is good enough to you know yeah. win night in and night out, even if their you know pitching hasn't been great. But um, so, anyways, we'll have to skip our other buy or sells. So this has been our last edition of Hot Shot Sports. We'll see you in the fall of 2017 here on Charter Channel. Help me out, guys. It's nine eight. Yeah, it's ready to throw it. Twenty channel. Kornheiser doesn't throw this. Yep, but. yep. <laughs> well, that's about it, guys. We'll see you for a week in review on Thursday at 4.30. Thanks again, folks. High energy in sports.